Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. I am Dr. Ram. In today's series, we are going to discuss about the somatosensory cortex. We are discussing our sensory system lectures wherein we discuss the sensory receptors, they carry the sensations and take it to the brain. The sensory receptors through the ascending tracts, they took it to a relay station called thalamus and they finally reach the somatosensory cortex. So our topic for today is somatosensory cortex. So what is the purpose of somatosensory cortex? Even though the sensation are carried from a different parts of the body, they are processed and finally understood by the somatosensory cortex. So let's try to understand what is the function of this somatosensory cortex tool. So getting into the topic, today we will be learning about the location and divisions of somatosensory cortex and the functions of somatosensory cortex. And we will also be discussing the what happens whenever these somatosensory cortex areas are damaged. So basically their function is going to get lost and they will present with some kind of disorders. So let's get into the topic. So first coming to the location of somatosensory cortex. Where is the somatosensory cortex located? Whenever we see the diagram of brain, there is one major division called as the central sulcus. There is one major division which is dividing or the sulcus that is passing inside the brain that is central sulcus. This somatosensory cortex is located just behind the central sulcus in this region. We will show it in the diagram also. In this region it is located and just in front of the central sulcus we will have the motor cortex. In this region we will have the motor cortex. So coming to the somatosensory cortex, the sensory signals they go and terminate just behind the central sulcus and in which lobe of the brain it is located? It is exactly located in the parietal lobe of the brain. These all the somatic sensations from the body, they reach the parietal lobe of the brain. Whereas special sensations like the visual will go to the occipital region and the auditory that is the hearing will go to the temporal cortex. So these two will be discussed in the special senses series. Then the somatosensory cortex, they are classically divided into somatosensory area 1 and somatosensory area 2. They are usually represented as somatosensory area 1 and somatosensory area 2. Other than this, we have something called as the somatosensory association area. We will try to understand their functions also. So coming to the diagrammatic representation, as you can see here, there is one big sulcus in this region which is called as the central sulcus and another classical sulcus is the lateral sulcus and we have one more sulcus in the brain which is not depicted here that is the parieto occipital sulcus. So these are the three major sulcus which is dividing the brain into four lobes. So coming to the central sulcus again, as you can see here, just behind the central sulcus, we have a AG stated that is our somatosensory cortex. And our somatosensory cortex is divided into somatosensory cortex 1 and somatosensory cortex 2. These are the two major somatosensory cortex divisions. And here you can see that there is some numbering called as 3, 1, 2. What is this numbering? These numberings are the Broadman's area. Broadman's area are areas in the brain wherein he has identified more than 50 plus areas and depicted them to have individual functions. So the somatosensory cortex, they have identified three regions for it. That is the area number 3, 1, 2 of the Broadman's area. And somatosensory cortex 2, it does not have any number designated. And here you can see here, there are two numbers that is 5 and 7. This Broadman's area, 5 and 7 are represented as somatosensory association areas. They are also very, very, very important. So this somatosensory area association areas are broad number number 5 and 7. Please remember this. It has been asked in MCQs also. So coming to the uh, different section wherein they have cut the brain in this sagittal section and they have represented it in the nearby diagram. As you can see here, there is a central sulcus here. And the somatosensory area has 3A, 3B, 1 and 2. This further 3 is divided into 3A and 3B. So basically these are the major regions of the somatosensory area 1. And here lies the somatosensory area 2. So all the sensations in the body, that is the somatic sensations, they are going to reach this area particularly, that is the somatosensory area. And finally, they will be perceived and then we can understand and make meaning out of the sensations. So these sensations are represented in a beautiful representation in the somatosensory area. All of you would have seen this diagram. It is also called as what? It is also called as homunculus. It is also called homunculus. 
what is this homunculus as and when they have started studying the brain and they have started mapping the representation of each of the body for example if a sensation is going from a particular region like lips and they have tried to map where all it goes and reaches and as you can see here the lips were having the maximum representation in the brain don't think the person is sitting over there it is just the representation and if any area is represented maximally it might have the large number of receptors for example here you can see here in the somatosensory cortex we have the large area of representation for the lips lips has the maximum area of representation because it is sensing most of the stimuli that is from the external environment and this is also called as the little man that is mapped in the brain it is also called as a little man that is mapped in the brain i don't think that the person is like this it is just a representation and if a particular part has very little number of receptors and not many fine sensations are going from it it will have very less representation as you can see here the limbs are less so as we can see here the facial regions and the lip has the maximum representation followed by the fine movements that is done most of the fine movements are done with our hands and fingers that's why they have a good amount of representation over here apart from the lips and as and when the functionality or the precision comes down the representation also decreases but don't think that the brain is so simple it has some very good property called as plasticity what is this plasticity this plasticity means that whenever a person is training his organ for example as suppose a player is playing continuously a football so his representation of the area in the brain will get expanded because of his regular activity so the brain can be modified like a plastic substances so that's why this property is called as plasticity so now let's discuss the function of each of the areas so coming to the somatosensory area 1 in our dorsal column discussion itself i have told that many of the sensations are going to the dorsal column and specifically i have mentioned some of the sensation as cortical sensation i told you guys that it needs an intact cortex to understand and interpret it these sensations are called as cortical sensation and they are perceived by the somatosensory cortex only so what are those sensation that is discrete localization for example touch can be felt by the receptors and it can be sensed even in the thalamus also but for discrete localization we need an intact cortex like two point discrimination and tactile localization and it helps to assess the critical degree of pressure also and whenever any object is given to your hand you can judge the weight of it suppose if i give a iron substance it is going to weigh more and if i give a plastic substance it is going to weigh less that judging is also done by this area and we have stereognosis stereognosis is the ability to identify an object with closed eyes it is the ability to identify a known object with closed eyes which we have discussed in our previous dorsal column also then graphesthesia suppose if your friend is writing a letter on your hand you will be able to identify it that is called as graphesthesia so all these are the properties of somatosensory area 1 suppose what happens whenever there is some lesion or some injury to this area all these functions are going to be lost so what will happen the person will have something called as a stereognosis he will not be able to sense stereognosis then the person will have something called as a graphesthesia and all the ability to judge at the weight of the object to the judge the texture of the object is gone so basically he will be touching an object but he will not be able to the identify the characteristics of an object this phenomena of losing all this function is also called as useless hand syndrome here whenever any object is placed in a person's hand he will be able to touch it but then he will not be able to make meaning out of it that's why this is also called as useless hand syndrome it is also called as or it is also called as tactile apraxia so he is not able to perceive the tactile sensation so that's why it's called tactile apraxia but we should make a special note about the somatosensory area again in pain and temperature discussion also i told you pain and temperature most of the perception is done by the which organ it is done by the thalamus itself so the pain and temperature are not impaired whenever there is some lesion in the somatosensory area 1 and it has also the plasticity property which i explained in the previous slide now coming to the function of somatosensory area 2 and somatosensory association areas so somatosensory area 2 they say that they haven't identified much of its function they just think that it is helping in cognitive differentiation of the stimuli like it helps to understand different kinds of stimuluses then coming to the somatosensory association area 
already we have seen that it is included in the broadman area 5 and 7 it helps to decipher the deeper meaning of a stimulus suppose a person is having a lesion in one half of the somatosensory association area what is going to happen he is not able to recognize a few things or the objects that is present in front of him he can identify the stimulus but he will not be able to make meaning out of it he will completely ignore that other half that process is called as morphosynthesis if he is able to identify the complex object it is called as morphosynthesis and if there is a lesion what is going to happen it is going to present with amorphosynthesis so this is a form of hemi neglect this is also clinically called as hemi neglect and this has been asked in various mcqs also so this person what he is going to do is he is going to completely neglect the contralateral part of the body it can go to severe heights like he will not be able to identify half of its body also because the fibers are crossing to the other side he will not be able to identify the other half of the body for example if there is a lesion in the right side he will not be able to identify the left side of the body also and he will not be able to recognize the objects that is which is present in the left side he will be seeing the impulses but he will completely neglect it which is also called as hemi neglect syndrome some books write it as contralateral hemi neglect syndrome because opposite side of the body is affected let me give you a beautiful example for example if the person is asked to draw a clock which is like this what is going to happen the picture on the right side will be drawn by the person with contralateral hemi neglect syndrome he is going to completely ignore the stimulus from one half of the body because of the affection in somatosensory association area and this has been asked in several times in mcqs also so please pay attention to here this is because of somatosensory association area destruction and they have given various beautiful examples also for example uh, the line was drawn and if the normal person is asked to bisect the line he is going to bisect in this region and if the same line is given to the patient what will happen is he is going to bisect here because for him the only the half of the stimulus is the line that is presented in front of him he will just recognize this region as a stimulus given and he will bisect in that middle point like this region this is another example of contralateral hemi neglect syndrome i hope it's clear thank you for listening we will meet in the next lecture thank you so much